Hi, this video is going to be about NX sheet metal bend tables and how to use them effectively for your manufacturing process. So the first thing to note really is where does the bend table information come from to begin with? What I've got here is a example sheet metal material standards table. And within this file, within this spreadsheet, there's a number of materials and these materials point to tool tables and the tool tables have values for bend radius and neutral factor. So let me just wind back a little bit and find out where we start with all of this. If you have a look at support center and navigate to the sheet metal area, you will see a section entitled sheet metal material standards file. And if we are looking here, there's a description on the functional blocks within this standards file and an option to download a sample file and that will get you to the spreadsheet with instructions to proceed. Once we have this table with all of our parameters loaded and we'll just talk through this briefly, we have a material table which defines the material that's going to be selected and we're focusing on this row 32. If I select this material, this sends me to look up a bend tool ID table. This bend tool ID table has a number of tool sets within it. Any name you choose, as long as they're unique. And this will show you a die and a punch that's going to be used with that tool set. And the definition of the bend radius for that die and punch points me to a secondary tool table, which defines the values. And this is what we're going to use in this example. So within my secondary tool table, I have a die and a punch with name HMD and HMP, which is specified here. And the tool table is constructed in a grid fashion such that we specify the angle in the row and we specify the thickness in the column. The thickness column has two columns, one for bend radius and one for neutral factor. And what happens if we actually select this tool table and I enter a bend radius of 60, I will get a, a sorry, an angle of 60, I will get a bend radius of 1.58 and a neutral factor of 0.36 and so on. You can have as many different material thicknesses in column pairs as you like. If I scroll down a little bit further, you can see I've done this here. We've got 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 1 1.2 and so on. But let's see this in action and how we point NX to this tool table. This tool table needs to be a text file or a CSV, comma delimited file. And this is specified in customer defaults in the material standards tab found in the sheet metal area. This particular part is a metric part and I'm pointing to the file that I've just shown you. So how do we use that? In this example part here, I've got a number of flanges ranging from 30 degrees, 45, 60, basically values that match the tool table for demonstration purposes. If I go to my preferences, my part properties tab, I can specify this information here with a fixed bend radius as I've done. My bend radius is three regardless of the bend angle. If I choose material selection or tool ID selection, it will point me to my standards file and allow me to specify the bend radius. But why would we do that? Well, in straight break sheet metal for standard uh, punch and die, the bend radius and sometimes the neutral factor change when the bend angle changes. Let's just have a look at an example now. When I bend this piece of metal, as the bend angle changes, the bend radius changes, dependent on the nose radius of the punch. And as the angle increases or the internal angle decreases, the bend radius will reduce. 
And this is done by empirical data. Uh, we would put some test pieces together and come up with that table. So in this particular example here, these values have had a piece of 1.5 millimeter material bent to these angles and measured the radius value and the neutral factor is calculated from the flat and folded lengths according to the angle. And uh, just uh, kudos to uh, one of our customers, Heismans Metalin, that provided this bend data to me. So this is real information that we're going to use here. So if we come back here now and I select my material selection, I'm going to pick my thickness at 1.5 and I've got a number of materials to select from. I'm going to use this ALMG3 and it's pointing my bend radius and neutral factor to the tool table. And that's saying, well, okay, my bend definition method is looking at a tool table. Which punch and die do you want to use? And in this case, I'm going to use the HMP and it defaults the HMD die because that's the only combination. Let's just pause and look at what we've done here. We've selected this material which says go to the bend tool tables. From the bend tool tables, select your die and punch. I've selected this bottom row and that's pointing my values to this table here. So what we will see when we OK the dialog, these bend radius values and neutral factor values will change according to the table. So let's hit OK and see that happen. So here we've got 1.57, a bend angle of 135. Now remember, NX is using a bend angle which is 135 from so this external angle my material table is specified using the inside angle okay so if we look at the 45 degree and I've actually typed it in the dialogue here so we're clear of what we're looking at here the 45 degree is the internal angle the 45 degree in the table for 1.5 thickness will give me a 1.57 bend radius. And if I slide that over there, we can see that this is giving me a 1.57 bend radius and so on as we go through up to an external angle of 30 degrees is a 5.78. So 150, 180 minus 30 is 150 is 5.78. So everything is according to that value. Let me just go back to the default values, come back into part properties and show you the difference between material selection and tool ID selection. Material selection defined all of the material thicknesses and values according to the table. All of these values are grayed out and read from the table. If I choose tool ID selection, all it's asking for is the bend definition method of punch and die. So again, I can get to the same information, but it's not taken into consideration the material thickness. This is still set at 1.5. For this particular example, the result is still the same, but the flexibility is slightly reduced. So two, two techniques, two methods there of using bent tool ID tables. And let's just have one more look at the process in action. We start with a flat piece with a bend radius at 5.78. And as the bend angle increases, you'll see the bend radius reduce as we're air bending. There's no restriction on the outside of this. It's just the punch tool radius that's defining the internal bend radius as we go through, in this case, to 90 degrees. Hopefully that gives you some indication of the power of bend tool tables within NX Sheet Metal.